Welcome to the channel folks, Clunkers and Classics, feeding time at the zoo, we're missing one kitty, I don't know where it went to, the gray one, uh, anyway the frigid weather is over, had about three days of that mess, then uh, Christmas, so it's a day after Christmas, so it's about 50 degrees out, sunny, supposed to get up to the 70s by the end of the week so we can get a lot of work done here just got about two more months of uh, never know when uh, one of these cold snaps is gonna hit again okay so last episode we got the uh, exhaust cutouts put on pretty happy with that um, so we're gonna get the, uh, and then before that we got the A-frames, I got the new set of, uh, correct 68-72 control arm A-frames on there, so we can put the front end on, uh, header panel, grill, filler panel, fenders, and probably the inner fender wells. Might do that a little bit later. Because we got to mount all the stuff, all the AC stuff, and overflow tank on one side, and then the computer uh, fuse block and all that on the other side. It's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass getting all that situated. Then I got to go find a hood. Hopefully, that one guy still got it. Uh, so that's what is planned next now them control arms the wrong ones that they advertise advertise from 64 to for 70 64 to 72 uh probably fit 64 67 but they sure don't fit a 68 uh they were from pirate jack from Asheville, North Carolina, or something like that, on eBay. That was his eBay name, Pirate Jack. Um, he had said that he would refund, reimburse for the control arms. Got them all off, boxed up, messaged them, nothing. Didn't return my thing. About a week later, messaged again, nothing. So it looks like he's not going to uh, stick to his word. Uh, the original auction did say that the buyer pays for the return. But of course it's only good for like 30 days. This is, I think I looked it up, I think I bought this stuff in August. You know, like five months ago. Because that's one of the first things I'd done to this. Was put them on there and then put the engine transmission in. So, of course, it's past their little 30-day thing. But, like I said, about a month ago, he said he would refund. But it looks like he's not going to. So, can't recommend buying anything from them. I did get a comment. Somebody did order some before they seen my video. Yeah, good luck with that. Just make sure you return them within the 30 days. Because eBay will kind of guarantee that if you ordered it through eBay. They'll make sure you get your refund and all that after 30 days. They're not going to, not going to. So I can't, can't get a refund through eBay, eBay, PayPal, stuff like that. Just got to take their word for it. He screwed me. So uh, I don't know. Unless I get a 64 to 67 Chevelle in one day. The bottom A-frames may be the same. I'm not sure. Could possibly use them in the future. Uh, I did go look at some cars from a friend of mine. His friend had like 15 cars, well, mostly trucks for sale. Uh, he wanted too much. He wanted, he thought they were all made of gold. But he did say he had a friend that had a 68 Chevelle that he's been trying to sell for a long time for six grand. I said, get a hold of him, I'll buy it. <laughs> six grand is uh, damn cheap for a Chevelle. I didn't even, 
I don't know. I don't know what kind of condition it's in. But if I get something like that, I could use uh, maybe the bottom eight frames. I don't know. Okay, so, and then I got these. I got refunded for these a while back. They're upper, but they're the same. They're probably fit 64 to 67, but not 68 to 72. I'll probably keep them ball joints of space. I am going to or order the uh, Moog ball joints. I think they were 31 30 $31.99 each. Uh, because the A-frames that I just put on there, these uh, deals here were a lot skinnier. And the problem I heard is that these will will strip and break or whatever and come off. So I'd be way more... I'd rather get the thicker ones like this and instead of taking these ones off and putting them on there, they're the same Chinese stuff. Uh, I'll just go ahead and buy the Moog. Spend 60-something bucks on them. Probably be 70 bucks with tax and shipping and everything. But So that way, you know, I heard that Moog is uh, made in China and not, not much better. But at least I'll have the Moog on there. Care of these as spares. And if they break, then I can blast Moog and say, yep. From what I heard, they're junk too. But I did, you know, get a lot of comments. Buy move, buy move ball joints. And guy, that that used to be the standard, but the like a lot of companies they've just went down the shitter. But we'll try it. Okay, so here we got the front end parts. I did steel wool this a while back. Um, I'm gonna steel wool it again. I'm gonna paint and mask this up. And paint this flat black in here. Uh, I, I don't know what I did with that. It may be in here. The original. I wanted to show you the original. Come on, get out of there. Show you the original uh, little emblem that went on there for sixty-eight only. It's a long, it's a long thing here. It was bent up, and it's one hundred and fifteen bucks new. Uh, didn't really want to turn this into an SS clone, but I got the spare SS emblem for the steering wheel. Um, I think I showed this on another video, but this is, uh, I bought this emblem here for, from a note for a Nova. And we're going to put that on there after I paint it flat black. Uh, the original 68 Chevelle one would say 396, which I didn't want. That's why I got a Nova one. So anyway, we're going to flat black that, put this on, then we can mount that. Okay, so... Uh, this, I'm going to pour 15 the bottom of this filler panel. I still got to kind of sand it down. Just went over it a little bit. We're going to sand all this down real good. Probably strip it down. Get that ready to prime because when I mix up some primer, I want to prime everything I can all at once instead of a little bit here for this part, a little bit for that part. We're going to do it all at once. So we got to prime this. Come on, out of the haircut. Uh, this filler panel, I've stripped it down the metal, fixed the little dents in it, and it was hit. It was hit in here. A uh, little bit of a crease. Anyway, we're going to prime all that, prime the filler, and then the fender. I'm going to make a little template and cut out from some scrap metal a uh, filler uh, patch panel here. Because the new patch panels are way, they're, they're like double, tripled in price. It's, it's nuts. They're a little piece of metal. Um, so we got to do that, and then I'll prime that too. So we'll prime all that. And then uh, both these fenders, they got, you can see some Bondo in here. We're not going to do any body work to the outside. We're just going to uh, do the patch panel down there because it's a lot easier doing it off. Uh, we're going to clean up all this front area here, strip it down, prime it. Um, did I? I think I pour 15 the inner 
the jam area here which is all faded out because pour 15 is not UV resistant so it will fade out sitting out in the sun they've been sitting out in the sun for months along with the wheel wells so we're going to mix a little after we prime that lower patch panel and the little front here uh, we're going to mix up some black paint I don't have much left I got to buy some more uh, but I'll have enough to do to jam this so we're going to jam the two fenders here with nice shiny black paint that'll last pretty much forever and then we're going to paint uh all in here on the filler panel, all these little areas here. Uh, it's this one I did pour 15 underneath of it there a while back. So, you know, probably a little black in there, but mainly around here, all the edges. It's going to be primed and painted. Uh, I'm not going to take any chance of anything rusting down the road. So, that's kind of what we got to do before oh and i gotta fill i don't know what this hole's from this one's from the antenna we don't need that anymore because uh the windshield i bought it's the only one available comes with a built-in antenna so we're going to use that we're going to put a patch metal patch and weld it in there so we'll get that done too paint all this in black in here all this area Uh, so I did one patch a while back. It's on another video uh, On this one this one was rotted out too yeah, It's getting a little bit of rust in here, but we can fix that, but I just made that patch panel there um, Just kind of Made where the holes went we can put washers and stuff on there But we need to paint I probably did put a little spray paint or something in there but we're going to paint all this fender too, black, all this black. Um, but you can see the uh, inner wheel wells here have all faded out. I'm sitting in the sun. May paint them. Uh, that's the poor 15 stuff. Not sure on that, but we're not putting them on right away. Uh, we, will, we will make a trip down to the parts store and buy probably spend 500 bucks on friggin paint hardener thinner uh, Some bulldog adhesive adhesive grip uh, Stuff like that it always you know you always think you're gonna spend 100 or 200 and ends up three or four uh, This paint here used to be 115 bucks a gallon who knows yeah, that, see there's nothing hardly anything left a little dribble um, used to be about 115 bucks for a gallon of this. Who knows what it is now with the price increases, inflation. We got primer, so we'll have to make a trip down there for, like I said, paint hardener, bulldog, some bulldog. Yeah, this is out too. Just about. Okay, so that's what I got planned. Uh, I got other stuff going on too, but that's what we got planned for the Nomad right now. So, let me come back when I get a little patch here. We'll go through the patch panel process a little bit. And uh, then I'll get the prime gun out and start priming all them areas. Sand down this some more. So show a little bit of that on the video. We'll get it all all primed. Probably have to wait a little while and then paint the black and then uh, let it dry overnight. Probably tomorrow, next day, put it together and get all that front end all bolted on there. Uh, yeah, the garage is just messy as hell, but this is all the stuff that I kind of use for the Nomad, all kind of close. You can't just put stuff all the way and cross a property in spots when you need it. Uh, so it's going to be pretty soon that we're going to clean this whole, whole area out here and start putting stuff that I'm not going to be using on the Nomad, put it in the, the old mobile home, which is basically a park shed. Uh, 
start putting all this stuff away. Uh, Got to build a console for it. After that, we'll put in this, uh, this front seat. Part of this console we'll probably use. And then whatever I don't use, we'll start putting it away and clear out this garage real good because not going to be any time soon, but eventually we're going to put it in here and paint it right in here. But Okay, had an SD card error. I don't know. Um, okay, so yeah, later on, pretty soon, week or something, we're going to start clearing out all this and all the stuff out front here that I'm not going to be using. It's just some of this stuff is like the rear end is too heavy to move uh, quickly by myself. Might have to get a dolly. I don't know. Get rid of all that. Start moving stuff out of the way. Uh, we're going to do all the body work and priming and everything outside. And it'll be a while before the paint. And we'll bring this in and paint it inside. I, I don't know when the timeline's going to be. But it's getting pretty damn close to being finished mechanically um, just the big stuff now is tires wheels and hood and after that it'll just be little stuff and then all the body work stripping priming and get all that done and perfect outside and then we'll bring it in here and paint it but uh okay so I'll be back when we get uh, going on the fender here. Okay, guys, we're going to paint this grill flat black. Uh, we'll put on some Bulldog Adhesive Promoter. Can't, can't hurt. Well, <laughs> unless there's supposed to be a little bit left in it. Oh, right, there we go. Well, okay, anyway, okay, we're going to use up, we got a little bit, a little bit, I think it's Walmart stuff, but I found it in a junk car. And then uh, we've still got some of this plastic paint. I think I painted the uh, dash bezel gauges thing. So we'll use up, uh, we'll use up this one first. Probably put on two or three coats. Anyway, I'll be back when I get it all painted. Okay, guys, put a few coats of uh, satin black on this. Need to kind of put it somewhere. I don't know. Put it out here in the sun a little bit. Put it out there for now, I guess. Okay, so I started on the fender here. Here's the old, the old piece. Cut that off, and uh, the brace is good. So I'm gonna put a little pour 15 on here. Okay, this is uh, this piece metal is off an old junk car. Um, cut that out, and we're gonna uh, gonna kind of measure it out for the bottom here. And tell where this goes but we get it we got to bend it and then measure that out for that hole and make a hole for that anyway yeah I'm gonna pour 15 that and and underneath here and do all that in one all this area here do all that in one one shot okay I'll be back okay guys I got the grill mounted 
And now I'm not going to paint this black or anything behind there. It's going to stay like that. Okay. Uh, you see there's more than enough room for the air to get through there. Cool the radiator. Okay. I'm going to go over here first. I got this uh, filler panel kind of stripped down. Got a few little few little dents I'll fix. Uh, why right in here? A little bit there. Just a little bit of Bondo. Just a little. Because it's going to kind of flex a little bit. I don't want to put too much on there. So yeah, it ain't going to be perfectly straight or nothing. Okay, the header panel's ready to paint. I did the patch. I got the patch made here on the fender. Uh, part of the old one, I think I showed you. Uh, I'm not gonna do any body work to this until it's all mounted. It's kinda warped a little bit in there, but that's what Bondo's for. We'll, We'll dolly that and fix that out later. But yeah, I just splice it in there, splice this in there, drill the hole for the bolt. And that's the back of it there. Fixing to prime all this bare metal spot, bare metal areas, and then put some black paint on it. Uh, fix the, put a little piece of metal there to fix that antenna hole. I cleaned up this rust a little bit here. That's some poor 15. And there, there's a lot of Bondo in this. On these fenders. They're all dented in. Like right here, from the, through the back, you can feel it's dented in. So they caved and paved it. It's just dented in. See the old Bondo. Uh... They had Bondo here without pulling this dent. Well, they're the ones that put the holes in there. But I banged it out from the inside a lot better. Uh, I just did that because it was a little bit easier to do while it's off. Um, it's got all Bondo here. That'll be all ground out and redone later. But for now, I just we're just going to put some primer on this bare metal area. You're gonna, it's kind of dented right in here too. Yeah, this fender is all, is all Bondo here. It's gonna be dollied out and uh, both of them, both fenders are pretty bad. But you know, what's the alternative? Um, okay, so we're just gonna prime them bare metal areas. Prime this, a little bit of body filler there. Probably put a little bit of body filler on the antenna thing before I prime it. So I'll be back when I get all these ready to prime. Gonna prime them, then I'm gonna spray some black paint on the underside. Uh, I already did this filler panel with the Pour 15. I think I probably showed you that. Um, probably just prime and then put some black paint over this. And then once everything dries, it'll be, it'll be tomorrow, we can bolt all this stuff on there. I got some other stuff to paint, but I don't have enough paint. I'll have to buy some here. Got them hood hinges and the wheel wells. All that can be put on later. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, well, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, guys, going to spray a little primer. Got my cheap uh, Harbor Freight gun. I'll be buying another one when I paint the the whole thing. I always start with a fresh fifteen dollar gun.
Anyway, I'm going to put a couple of coats of that on there. Uh, this is the other fender. I'm just going to put a little... No, I actually wanted to uh, spray some black on that. That doesn't need any primer. I had a little Bondo left, so I put a little bit on there. Welded up them holes there. Anyway, I'm gonna throw a couple coats of primer and then some black. Okay, I'm going to throw on uh, some black and then uh, let her dry till tomorrow. It's getting to be about 4 o'clock. And uh, tomorrow we will put this front end on. So I'll be back. Okay guys, it's the next day. Now, we're going to put all this front end together. Put a little bit more black paint on the inside of this. We're not up north in the rust belt, so it's not going to undercoat it or nothing. If I was, I'd do that. Same with this fender. Just had a little dribble of paint left, so I didn't have enough to... Uh... We're going to clean this up. I I don't know if I put paint or pour 15 on, on here and here. Uh, but I can paint it once it's on the car. I mean, it is black, so there's no bare metal showing or anything. Uh... We're gonna, I'm gonna clean up. I need to start driving, driving these cars here. Maybe we'll start up the Nova or the Chevelle here and uh, take it to the uh, paint store uh, today or tomorrow. Okay, here's the header, header panel. I just, uh, same thing, just painted the black and the jam. Of course, this will have to be sanded and reprimed and painted the top part. But we can do that once it's on the car. This here, just put two coats of black. Let's pour 15 underneath. Uh, that's going to be good enough. Like I said, it's not perfect, but anyway. So we got that, all this stuff ready to go on. Already got the grill on. Uh, I forgot that them bolts were so rusted that I'm going to, I don't think I got, here were like 9 sixteenths big bolts here. Um, I did buy a pack of new half inch bolts right here off of eBay. Those are half inch, well... I'm hoping they're half inch and not nine or uh, 13 millimeters. We'll see if they fit. But I got the, uh, these are mainly I bought for the fender wells, wheel wells. So they fit in there because those, those are shot too. But anyway, I don't have the nine sixteenths like that, I don't think. So I'm going to need uh, four of them. I do got, you know, 9 16 bolts to go on the top here, here, and here. But those ones I had to buzz off with a cutting wheel. Okay, so uh, let me round up all the bolts and everything. I may put you all on time lapse or something and bolt this on there. And we'll do a few things. We'll hook up the uh, horns and uh stuff like that so i'll be back okay guys i got the fenders on for now fix and put the header panel on 
a little bit wide right here. I tried pushing it in. That's about as far as it can go. There's a Nomad emblem. I still need one more. Uh, I just put those half inch bolts with some washers there. They seem to work. Yeah, I, th I think it's up. It's up a little bit high. I don't know. I don't think I got these tightened yet. They may be. Uh, it seems like it has to go down a little bit, but I'll make it work anyway. It's pretty close. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is that grill emblem. See how it's bent. It went there. Plus it's all faded and everything. Yeah, they wanted 115 for that. So I got this SS for uh, 30 bucks, 32 bucks or something. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me get the header panel on there and the valance panel goes along the bottom and I'll be back. Okay, guys. We got the front end together. Okay, got all this bolted in. I just kind of stuck that emblem on there. It's the only year, 68, that has Chevelle on it. 6972 doesn't have Chevelle. And then the Nomad. I just stuck on there. Sitting on there. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the worst spot here. This thing was hit. This grill was all bent in here. This was all, it was hit here. It was hit really bad here where they had welded the old one of this onto the fender. That's the old one there. You can see the crap I had to cut it, cut to get it off. Uh, yeah, then it was hit up here and it was all split. So anyway, that's just kind of roughed in. Um, Got the two truck horns on there, and that's wired in. Wired into here, that works. Okay, uh, I just kind of got the battery set up there. Um, I think we'll drive to the paint store and uh, I want to get the hood. If I get that, if that guy still got the hood for sale, I'm going to go buy that real quick here in the next few days. It's two and a half hours there, two and a half hours back, so it's going to be an all day thing. I'm going to ruin a day, so I'm going to have to try to pick a day that there's bad weather and the weather looks good for the next five days or something. So I want to paint the bottom of the hood black probably may have to repaint this stuff black and repaint the top of these uh, wheel wells gloss black so everything will be painted so I can do it all at once okay but we'll go to the paint store here um, to put a chart a battery jumper box and a battery might drive the Chevelle here. Okay, let me tell you what's coming up. I decided, I was 99% sure anyway, but I'm gonna get a, uh, gonna go with the uh, Chevy Monte Carlo Corvette rally rims. Okay, we're gonna go with uh, this size on the back, this is 275, 60, 15. That's a common, pretty much the biggest you can get without spending triple the money, uh, even though they're pretty high now. Uh, these rims are 15 by 8, I believe. Um, I bought them about two years ago. Um, they were they're brand new. They're cost. I think sixty-seven, sixty-eight dollars each, and I forget these. I think the caps were like fifty bucks uh, for all four. Don't know what they are now. 
this cat keeps following me around okay uh so that's what i'm gonna go with because that's about the cheapest i'd like some lightweight aluminum ones for the nomad but the prices are just too high i can't find any used ones around here so they used to be 67 68 bucks now they're like 80 to 90 bucks for them um so i'm looking on there on ebay the other day and because you can get them any size you want 15 those are 15 by 8s i wanted to get 15 by 10s for the back but they were about 90 bucks at the time now they're 117 each and i'm definitely going to go with 15 by 10s with 275 60 15s on the back of the nomad Okay, the front I don't care about too much, but I do want a little bit taller tire than that's on there, you know, because my old pan drops down uh, the side pipes and all that. So I'm going to go with, uh, well, so I'm looking on there the other day and I found uh, 15 by 6, a pair of them with the center caps with the trim rings so there's just two two tires two caps two rings for fifty four dollars each there's three available so i bought two so that'll go on the front of the nomad i know they're kind of thin but i'm just going to get some thin tires for the front and i'm going to go with 215 70 15 and they're almost they're a little bit taller than than these ones here which are two 225 60 16 so 215 70 uh, 15 is about three quarters of an inch taller than this one so that'll be that'll be great and those tires uh, i think are about 70 80 dollars each okay so i believe these rims here are 15 by 8. so anyway they're going to be kind of tall and skinny on the front and then pretty wide on the back the 15 by 10s pull it out a couple more inches uh it's jacked up in the back so the tires the tires are not going to hit the wheel well or nothing and if they do I jack it up more. Well, I got the air shocks. So there, the front ones will be a little bit, or the back ones will be a little bit taller in the front. But they'll still be tall on the front here. So I think I'll have plenty of room. I'd rather have some wide ones and stuff on the front, but what can you do? You know, I didn't want to spend, uh, I think the 15 by 8s are about 90 bucks. 15 by 10s are 117.95 definitely got to get the 15 by 10s so saving uh 40 bucks by buying the 15 by sixes 40 bucks each so that's 80 bucks um plus i want to go too wide on the front i don't want it hitting okay so i ordered those two for now i'm fixing to put some more money in paypal and order the rest of them uh when i get get that done and the tires get here i don't know could be a week or two but they're going to be ordered um okay the power steering box here is leaking after all this work i got all the hoses and everything on there everything works good no leaks but it's leaking from the seal it's leaking from the seal in the box i could buy a kit and fix it but uh i didn't want to take a chance taking it off putting it on there and it'll leak again or something um i didn't think they were that much most of them are about 300 and up 300 to 500 dollars for for a new one um i got this place found this place on ebay that will that send you a rebuilt one it's two basically 200 bucks they'll send you one but you got to give them 150 deposit so you got to give them 350 
Then they send you a prepaid box. Use the same box with a prepaid label and send your old one to them. And they give you the 150 back. So it's basically 200 bucks. Guaranteed for three years. That's ordered. That's on its way. We've got the Moog, Moog uh, ball joints. Uh, I don't think the wheel well will be in the way, but I'm going to leave the wheel wells out until I get them two ball joints in there. And we got to do something. I can't find the uh, the uh, the deal here. The little rubber stopper, bumper stop, bump stop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think I'll have to use one off them other A-frames. See if I can put that on there. I can't find the exact one for that. So, uh, and the ball joint is right there. Put on the Moog ball joints. Put in a bump stop on each end and then that should be ready other than bleeding the brakes i still got to bleed the brakes so i still got a bunch of other bunch of stuff to do to it uh i did buy a stereo i should have brought it out we're going to build a console here real quick um i got a flat not well a big square stereo but let me just go get it. I'll be right back. Okay, this is the stereo I got from uh, Walmart. Boss Audio Systems. 320 watts. Uh, CD player. Even a D DVD player. Uh, all that stuff. Um, some of some mounting stuff and a little remote. Okay, this is it here. That's just a little cover. Okay, so when I build a console, that's going to go in something like that. Okay, and then we're going to get a three gauge set up for these gauges uh, right underneath of it. There's going to be two fuel gauges and a temperature gauge. And that's going to go right underneath of that. Right in here somewhere. I wanted to use some room for a little cubby hole type thing. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get that. Or uh, cup holders and stuff. But we'll we'll figure that out. That's why I kind of had to buy all this because we're going to work around, build it around the stereo and the the three gauges. I don't really have any other gate. I don't want to hang some gauges down here or nothing. I didn't really think I'd need any, but I want a couple extra gauges on there in case these factory ones kind of they act a little screwy every now and then. And it's I don't think it's a ground. Someone said it, it's a ground, but. Uh, so anyway, that's coming up. We're going to build a whole console. I got part of a console. We're going to come in here with some cup holders and a, a deal here. Uh, we're just going to build it out of some thin plywood. We're going to mold it all together, and then we're going to recover it probably in this type of material. Okay, so that's coming up along with all that other stuff I mentioned. Uh... If we can get all that and then we'll mount the seat in there. So if we can get all that done, then we can start on the body work. I still got to get underneath here and we're going to run a uh, another fuel uh, gauge wire from sender unit that's in the tank. I, sh I should have run that wire, but now I got to drop the tank again and we're going to run another wire and hook that up to another fuel gauge. So we'll basically have two fuel gauges in case one screws up two fuel gauges for the for the aftermarket tank and then we got the factory gauge for this tank so yeah three fuel gauges really but okay uh then after we get all that done then we can start on the paint and body work we'll start with these fenders they're just beat to hell well maybe this one ain't as bad yeah see this is all caved in here too Okay, then I'll go get that hood. If you don't have it, I'll have to order a new one. 
We're going to go with a fiberglass cowl hood. Uh, let lots of air in and out. Keep the engine cool. I don't want any heat trapped underneath the hood. So we need a big cowl to let all the heat in and out. Okay, so uh, I think that's it. We'll, uh, we'll go for a ride in the Chevelle here. Let me get that boosted, pour a little gas in it. Should have gas in it, but gas down the carburetor, get it running, pull it around here, and wash it off. Uh, and then we'll, we'll take a trip down the uh, paint store, and we'll see how much they uh, screw me on the paint. We're going to go with that. I showed you... The Nason 2K urethane, just straight black. And uh, get some other stuff there while we're at it. Okay, so I'll be back in a little bit. Put a jump box in it. A little bit of gas down the carburetor. She fired right up. First crank. Now I gotta wash all the dust off of it. <laughs> I started to drove this thing in, I don't know, probably six months. Anyway, let me clean all this dust off and we'll we'll go for a ride in it. Okay guys, we're on the road. Got puppy in here with me. She still needs an alignment. Alignment's a little bit off, but I don't think I'm taking any of my cars in for an alignment. Rinsed, rinsed all the dust off, but man, it's, I didn't take no soap and a rag or nothing to it. It needs it. It's just really, really dirty. But that's what I got to go through every time I want to drive one of these cars. It's a big ordeal just to drive it. It's so bordered by uh, three dirt roads, so got a lot of dust. It'll be covered in dust in probably three or four days. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, we're almost at the paint store. Forgot to bring my Vaseline. I think I'm going to get really screwed here. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys. It's that same I showed you, the 2K urethane gallon of Bondo. Bulldog. And activator. Last time I bought that paint, it's been a while. It was 115, now it's 178.50. 8254 for the activator, 3623 for the bulldog adhesion promoter. And the cheapest gallon of body filler they got is $40.25. 36916. 
Ooh. Yep. Anyway, I'll be back. Well, guys, I could really use a steak dinner, but after getting raped at the paint store, I'll have to cheap out on McDonald's. I did stop by the uh, local wrecking yard, got a grill for my latest flip vehicle. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I don't know when. I'm trying to get it ready to sell. And then once it's sold, I guess I'll do the video on it. You got to make some money on these flip cars to pay for these. Restoring these old cars. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys, we made her back. Just love the sound of the exhaust on this. Here's my... There's the paint I use anyway, Nason 2K. And this is the grill. Grill for my little flip car. You see this one's all wrinkled up. Anyway, I'm gonna try to flip this and make some money so we can pay for <laughs> It's been a very expensive month. I think I spent over a thousand on this. And then, uh, of course, the end of the year, the property taxes due, the uh, full year's car insurance, all that stuff. Been very expensive. So, anyway, um, I think I'll end this video on that note. And I uh, already went through what we're going to be doing next. So stay tuned. Like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we'll be back next video. And uh, I'm going to start driving these. It's great weather now. Uh, I like driving the Le Mans a lot. It's not as dirty. I'm going to take the Le Mans out next time I go into town. Or maybe the orange Nova. I haven't driven that Nova in a long time. Anyway, I got a lot of thumbs up, a lot of compliments on the car. Everybody loved it, even though it's still filthy. So anyway, uh, yeah, we'll see y'all next video. Thanks everybody for watching.